Now, in terms of the results which we saw this morning, has the pandemic uh, impacted the bank's profitability worse than expected? Uh, thanks, Adinda. Of course, we are going through the pandemic uh, of the century. So I think the good thing is we started this crisis from a position of strength. Um, we have very strong capital and we were prepared and we are confident that we can ride through the crisis. Of course, the crisis impact hasn't been fully felt yet. Um, one of the first effects is the falling margins. And we were caught by a little bit of surprise by the sharpness uh, of decline, mainly because a lot of the policymakers and the benchmark rates have come down very, very sharply. So the lockdown also affected some of our businesses from the consumer side. Um, but most important is whether we can weather the asset quality crisis, which is what we did um, I think if you look at what we did itself, we knew that the crisis is not showing up yet, but we anticipate that it can get worse. So as you correctly pointed out, we loaded a lot of general provision so that we can buffer ourselves moving forward so that we are confident that we have enough capital to support our customers' needs uh, when they arise. Uh, you said it could get worse. How much worse? Because we know that the MAS has come out to say that all the support measures will not be extended. So this is something that we are working very closely and watching that portfolio. Um, we are actually worried about the cliff effect, mainly after if the MAS uh, or the relief measures are not extended, how bad will this customer be? Can they survive on their own? So as a matter of just rough sense, 16% of our portfolio today um, is under that uh, relief scheme. We are quite confident the majority of them will, will be able to make it. We have a very concise, precise team now looking at this portfolio very, very closely to make sure that we can understand the cash flows requirements and whether they are seeing signs of stress. So, so what we are hoping for is to restructure some of this to give them the cash flows that they need to ride through the crisis. Um, of course, we will have some that will not be able to make it. Okay, we knew that the operating environment has changed. So people, customers in the airline industry, in the hospitality industries uh, will be feeling a little bit more stress. So we expect NPL levels to go up. Um, but to, we are not expecting it to go to the roof. Maybe at the worst case, it might double, but we are prepared to and comfortable to manage that. So, so having said that, Wi-Fi, when do you see NPLs peaking then? Okay, we knew that the problem will start surfacing more in the next year, which is really when the MS relief program, if... They, like what MAS says, they stop. We would think that it will slowly creep in and maybe peak at the end of next year. And the question is, we MAS is actually now working with us to make sure that all the effort that we have, uh, making sure customers uh, don't go under once the relief program is taken out. So we have specialized teams uh, at the industry level looking at what we can do uh, whether we need specific relief uh, and not a general uh, program uh, on certain areas where MS is most concerned about. MS is most concerned, obviously, on employment and the SME segment. That's something that we are focusing a lot on. But for the time being, the good news is that although SME, a lot of them applied to the program, only 50% of them actually draw down. Okay, that, that actually can give you an indication that they are not as stressed as most people think because most of our customers has also gone through a crisis and now they are quite sensible in not to over leverage and to manage the cash flow. So, so you ask me, I think it will peak maybe end of next year, um, but along the way, we will manage it and we will make sure that we can help customers overcome their difficulties uh, if possible.
Wi-Fi, UOB is very much focused on its business within the ASEAN region with the escalating tensions between the U.S. and China. Do you see your businesses in this part of the world benefiting? Yes, I think if you really look at Southeast Asia itself, the long-term potential is there. I think uh, everybody knows about the young population, the growing middle income, the, the tripling of GDP, etc. So, so you are right that because of this tension uh, of the trade war and also the COVID, uh, it has actually driven more interest to the region. And people look to diversify um, their income and their manufacturing to this part of the world. Of course, Singapore and the Southeast Asia region will be in the best uh, position. So if you, as a testament to our resilience, if you look at the first half results, our operating income in the Southeast Asia actually grew 13% um, year on year versus a 20% decline in Singapore and a 5% decline in North Asia. So that gives you a rough sense that our diversification effect of the Southeast Asia region is actually having some positive uh, diversification. And at the same time, we are actually able to choose customers, good customers that are moving out of their country to shift their manufacturing base. So, right. so, so we, are, we are very selective. So you are right that we are seeing uh, actually positive signs. Wi-Fi, more and more people are working from home. What's a long-term strategy in terms of work from home for UOB? Eventually, are you encouraging more of your workers to, to work from home? What's, what kind of numbers are you looking at? So I think when we started the so-called lockdown circuit breaker, um, most people were very worried about working from home. But we have just done an in-house survey, yeah? and 80% of them received very positive feedback about working from home and about their effectiveness. But our, our philosophy is that there's still a need for physical working in office, mainly because we need staff to interact, to meet, and where collaboration are developed. I think if you look at it, the culture of the company, which is what we pride ourselves in, we need that togetherness to live and breathe. So we suspect going forward a flexible combination where people will work some days in office and some days uh, at home. So we are actually working out a flexible working arrangement so that we can provide more flexibility to colleagues while maintaining what we call the culture of collaboration and productivity. So, so that's probably where we see ourselves moving forward. Uh, we will continue to enhance uh, work from home uh, capabilities, uh, whatever technology system improvements we have done. Uh, more important is the security right. that we are putting on head. And also to make sure that when staff that are working in office are comfortable because they are worried. So staff welfare becomes very important for us. So besides the fiscal distancing mm. and all, we continue to make sure that they are comfortable coming to office, which we've done a lot to make sure that the place is clean, etc. So we see a combination uh, developing um, and, and we'll see how it evolves.